Hey everyone and welcome back. We are going to be back on old Pickle the Bus. This is my 1958 bus and it, it needs much, much love. <laughs> I've given it a lot, but it needs a lot more. And uh, it's kind of clouding over. We might need some lights. Let me get those. Hang on a second. I don't know if that's any better or worse, but uh, I want to get this off the rotisserie. I've pretty much got the floor ready to go. I'm still working on a couple pieces up in the bulkhead. I need to build a machine, not a machine, but a tool to help me kind of finish that section up there. So I'll be sharing that with you as well once I get that kind of done and completed. But in order to get this off the rotisserie, I have got to get this busted up frame horn fixed. So if you'll remember when we first brought it here and set it in this spot, the engine kind of listed, it set crooked to one side. Well, the reason being because that was all ripped to shreds. So I need to build that. And a couple, that's been many, many, several videos ago, I took apart uh, the pieces of the old one and saved or at least tried to save and retain the threaded portion of that, because we're gonna reuse that. And I labeled all the pieces, like any good scientist should do. <laughs> and then this is the bag. Unfortunately, you can't see it real well. That's the bag of debris and dirt that I took out of just this section of the frame horn. And if you'll look in here, I've got probably that much more in there to dig out. So let's dig that out. Cut this off. I want to dig that out first so I can save it to because I'm a nerd and I want to see how much is in there. But and we'll cut that off and then we've got to build one of those on this side. It looks like it's pretty much the same size, uh, the tube itself. As it kind of heads back, it, it gets a little bit thicker right here, a little bit fatter. But we should be able to make this fairly easily, I would think. And then that's the threaded portion I saved. And we just gotta weld that onto the end and make sure that it lines up. It has to line up for everything to bolt in properly. So let me go get a pick. We'll pick everything out of there and see how much we have. And then I'll add it to my frame horn debris bag. Because <laughs> I wanna see. If it's probably about a pound. Right now, maybe a pound and a half. Yeah, that's nice, huh? Just thought I'd mention, I had a couple people in the last video kind of talk about the paint job on old Ruby here. Uh, this isn't a paint job. I sound like a broken record. I know I've mentioned this before, but different people on the channel. This is, the whole thing's plasma cut. Uh, I did the fender as well. Fender was the first body panel I ever did. So uh, it definitely is a technique that you kind of have to perfect but I didn't want to, this is just rattle canned to kind of sort of match. It's not, it's not very good. It's close enough, gets us by, but I didn't want to cut up the real hood. It's hanging right up there. So the car was pretty much all original paint and you know, you can't mimic this kind of patina. So I didn't want to cut the real hood. We cut a junker. It was full of Bondo. I had to sand all the Bondo out before I could get it down to metal enough to cut it. So yep, it's a plasma cut hood. Would be a cool paint job though, now that someone's mentioned that. Be kind of neat. I was going for the lace look. I don't know that I'm officially to that level yet, but we'll get there. Just takes more practice. I was thinking it might be kind of cool to repair pickle using old pickle parts like shock towers. So I put a set of calipers on this original, or the good one. And then I have the sh the old uh, shock towers, but they're probably too far gone anyway. I don't think they're, they're going to be the right width. Ah, oh, they're so close. Mmm. Just a little bit too small. So it's just shy of an inch and three quarter. I wonder if an inch and three quarter will get that. Oh, so very close. That would be close enough for me. <laughs> On this project, anyway. And then I found this little piece of pipe. And it does sleeve over that, so we might be able to use that as our, kind of, to weld that to it and use it as a plug weld. 
So whatever I build around it, we can drill and plug weld this to the top and bottom so it'll have some interior. I've got more of this stuff too. So that's kind of where I'm at on the thought process. It does look like it's mostly perfectly round until you get like right, about right there is where. So maybe three or four inches back is where it kind of starts to change about where the turn happens. So if we could get something tubular that was that diameter, I think we could make it work. So let me hunt around a little more and see if I can find something that's a little bit better fit. Uh, I do have these 59 Beetle. This is the passenger side. But if you'll notice, they're more of an oval. The bus is almost perfectly circular. It is perfectly circular right at the end and then it tapers. But I wonder if I could use this once it gets to a certain point. I have the other side. So I could cut the other side. They're very similar. But just right at the end, more of an oval shape. Uh, let's, the threads, I think, are the same. I have a bolt here. Pretty sure they are, yeah. That's, that's, so that's up here. Yep, so those are the same thread. Be nice if we could just modify that to fit, but I think it's more of an oval. I don't think it's going to work for us. That's a bummer because that would have been really nice. We still, may be, bleh, we still may be able to use some of it. Maybe like the top half if I can split it. Hmm. A moment to ponder. Well, I dug around in the pile a little bit. And, you know, a shock tower, the upper part of a shock tower, will fit in there pretty much perfectly. So this is the one off of Pickle, one of the ones off of Pickle. And it's a pretty good fit. But, if I cut that back like I'm planning on, this isn't going to be long enough. It's going to be too short. It'd be kind of cool if we could repair Pickle using his own guts. <laughs> but I think... I think this is going to be too short. And the metal's just a little bit um, thinner, I think, on these. I'd have to check it. It looks close. But I was digging in the pile, and I came across uh, a couple pieces I had bought uh, at the salvage yard. These are off of a kid's trampoline. So, you know, it, it, they're slightly curved to make the big circle of those big trampolines and they do have the slits in the side for the springs but they are what they appear to be pretty similar in thickness so let's see here and they're kind of it's kind of got one end squared off and where this kind of squares off i think it, i think it might work i can't be this lucky right <laughs> and i have plenty to work with <laughs> Look at that. Oh, man. That is perfect. How's it fit on the back? Let's look on the back side. I think we can make that work. What do you think? Looks pretty good. So we can go ahead and cut that off because I have plenty of material to work with. I think that's gonna work. What are the chances? I'll show you why I picked these up. So he had this idea he wanted me to build. <laughs> I remember going to my parents and sketching something out and saying, you know, Hey mom, can you can you sew this specific bag for me? Hey dad, can you build this thing for me? <laughs> so I'm kind of reliving what my parents went through. But we found these wheels at the local community bike project. 
and uh, kids bikes are free so we found a little kids bike cut it in two and then I put the trampoline piece right up here not my best welding job we were trying to get it done in time for fun fest but uh and I had I had help too <laughs> but we could put a couple wrenches on the bottom screwdriver kickstand and then the center is two pitchforks with the tines facing in on each other that was his idea and he wanted to leave the seat on it so if you go back and watch the effingham video he's riding it through downtown effingham i say effingham the fun fest video and he wanted a cup holder so if you put a bottle of water in here and then stick the bungee over it it holds a bottle of water it's got a bell Screwdrivers were his idea for the handles. So there you go. That's why I had the trampoline piece because I went to find something we could sleeve down into the bike frame to make it work. And that's what we came up with. So uh, thanks to Mr. D and our picking at the Savage Yard, I've got a couple of these. And I think I even have a longer piece. Uh, yeah, I have a longer piece over there. And it doesn't have a squared off end like that so it's probably like a piece of the leg or something off the trampoline so we'll try to stick with these two because i think these are going to work pretty good but i basically did a do-over <laughs> if i need a do-over and there's probably more of these at the salvage yard because this is a pretty common thing to be tossed away once a kid reaches a point let me go in and get a metal gauge and we'll just check the thickness and make sure we're at least uh, within the realm of what i think is is doable and i think we have a solution so I just keep one of these style gauges on my key ring. Kind of one of those, I always know where it is and I can't tell you the number of times I use it. I prefer it over the rounded style. Let's see what we've got here. Ah, caught my head. My hair got stuck. Probably should go put my cap on. Yeah, it's bigger than 18, that's good. 16's a snug fit. Like, I had to kind of force it on there. Yeah, and I can't get it back off. <laughs> there we go. So. Looks like it's between... 14's a little too loose, but 16's too, way too tight. Ugh. Okay, let's see what the bus is. Now the gussets appear to be a little bit thicker. And the top is not all rotted. In fact, there's still original dove blue paint up there. So let's go for that. What did we say it was? 16? Yeah, 16 will go on. Yeah, so it's about the same. It goes on really hard at 16. <laughs> Stuck. 14. So, yep, they're pretty much the same. So I think that's going to work. The lower gusset looks like it's a little bit thicker. Probably 14 straight up. No, it's bigger than 14. So it must be 8. So I have some of that, I think in the shop, we can make that. And I'll just lap over. Mine will be on the top and come out and over. And then we'll go to the bottom and we'll probably just make it come down right here on the frame. Could cut the whole thing out, but I kinda hate to do that because anything past about right here is good. Just leave original alone. So I think that's what I'm gonna go with. We're gonna try and use those in what our angle is here. It's close. <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if the curve of that ends up being exactly what we need? You know, this kind of curves up and out. I don't know if it's the same or not. I'll have to cut it down. We'll have to cut one of them down, get it to the point we need it, cut one of them down and see where we're at. That would be just too easy. 
And I like that it actually sleeves all the way. Like I can, I can hit this with a hammer and it'll go all the way in. And then we can just drill a couple holes. When I get it cut back, the only bad thing is this gets pretty thick right here. But if I took this down, you know, and then curve this end back up, and we definitely need to cut that out. Did you see that when I push down on it? Watch. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it or not. Hang on. <laughs> the whole thing's bending. Yeah. That's that whole bottom side of that's rotted out, so we just cut it off. Yeah. Top side's in pretty good shape, sadly. Bottom, not so much. Watch this. Think that might need replaced? <laughs> See it riffing out? Yeah. So let me go do a little bit of figuring and cogitating and all of that good stuff. And when I get a plan together, I'll bring you back. So I, I wanted to check and see. I don't, I don't even think we're going to have to ping that over too much to get that to fit on there to weld around it. So I think we have what might be perhaps the perfect solution to our frame horn problem. And I was digging around and I found uh, a couple other little metal pieces. I'll show you here. Get it in there. I had to go back and get my hat because every time I'd go in here, <laughs> my hair would get caught on all the rust. So I had to go back in and change my appearance a little bit. <laughs> these big uh, pieces of junk I had grabbed. I don't know, I probably bought them to cut hearts out of or something. Who knows? But they already have this nice uh, 90 in them. So I was thinking if they're wide enough down here, we could put them under. They're a little bit heavier duty than what we need. But if we use this on the bottom, let's just see if it's the same width. I'm talking about distance out, so from here to here, we've got that much because they kind of taper. Oh yeah, because it ends. Yeah, we've got enough. So we could use these as our bottom. I've got two of these. There. And then when I go to, maybe I could bend 14 gauge up and over to kind of sleeve it. But if we put that on the bottom, I think that would be plenty strong enough. So that might work. poking around and it's it's good to this right where the seam is and then right here this section right here is not and the two sides <coughs> excuse me are still pretty thin so I think I'm gonna go ahead and take it out just a little bit further this part I think we're good but I may go ahead and take this out just a little bit more the top is good and actually, the, this side is the worst side. This side feels pretty good. Let's take a hammer along it, see what we get. Yeah, over here is not good. 
This side's good. Can't really get a swing on this side over. So the driver's side, the driver's side frame horn is pretty much gone. So if we cut out, let's just take it back. Bring the camera over here. Let's take it back to about right there. Move my light. And cut it down. You can see where I put my hammer. The hammer went through right there. Feels good up there. Yep, let's bring it back about another inch. Now we're losing our, our sleeve in, you know, our, our shaft that we were going to kind of use to marry the two pieces together. But I'd rather have it be solid metal. And we are definitely not solid metal there. So let me get the wheel again and we'll just kind of cut up and over. Just want to show you real quick the difference in the thickness. There's the top of the wall of the driver's side. There's the top of the wall, the passenger side. So big difference in thickness. So this is like half what it should be. Top looks good. So I think it's okay. But yeah, not good. Better to get it out now than find out later. Plasma cutter probably would have been a little easier just to get in here, but the, what I don't like about a plasma cutter is occasionally I'm, I'm <laughs> I get a little trigger happy, and I didn't want to get into this. And using the cutoff wheel, we can just go little bites at a time and kind of assess as we go. We can do that with the plasma cutter too, but mainly I just want to stay out of that bottom frame piece. I spent some time, I kind of just took a wire wheel and went around. And we're to good metal, it's not all that pitted looking stuff anymore. The inside of this one is pretty pitted, I don't know if you can see that in the shot you're on right now. But we're going to lap over it anyway, so I'm good with what's left. But I thought we might go ahead and take this off while we get the chance. Hey, we're moving the clip. Get it to turn anyway. And have to get a <laughs> have to get a uh, pair of ice grips or something on that backside. But I thought I'd go ahead and get both of those brake line uh, hoses out of there on each side while I've got this kind of tore down this far. Or we can go a to totally different route and I can try and knock the clip out. Somewhere around here is a screwdriver. Yeah, both tabs just busted off. There's a nut on the other side too. Yeah. Looked like it would go through the hole, but. <laughs> I'm going to try again. I think it'll go through. I had a second look at it. It's just stuck. There we go. Gotcha. I probably need to replace him, huh? <laughs> like everything on this bus. And then what if we take this piece out of our trampoline? Right in, right in your eyes, sorry. From our trampoline, and we stick it. At least I feel like we're dealing with the same thickness all the way around now. What if I hammer that 
back we drilled a couple plug welds so then we can weld one of these goes in easier than the other that's the one that's being difficult that's the one being hard to get along with let's get the other one I got enough problems as it is I don't need more there we go so if we went there to there what do you think and then we build the piece that comes off of here and sleeves over to make it look like that one I think that might work we can also plug weld from the bottom we can drill a hole through the bottom gusset on the back side so we can go into it from the bottom and both sides and the top got a little bit of a gap know if I want to you know what we could do we could cap the end of this off and then build make a L bracket basically that comes up and goes to this and then we can just weld it to this drain hole use it as our plug weld I know that those are supposed to be like a a drain hole but clearly they don't work like they're supposed to when they get dirty <laughs> Hmm. Well, let me think on that for a minute. We got a little bit of adjustability to that. I think the big thing is we just got to get the link right and then get the angle right. And we got it. And then we'll make, I'll make the cap come down, hopefully just like the original one, or similar to it at least. Yeah, I think that's gonna work. And the sides really aren't bowing out when I hammered that in. So that tells me this metal's really pretty good. And then I think we'll just build a bracket to weld right up in there. My uh, hanging clip-on light, the battery was dead, so I had to throw it on the charger real quick. So I got the flash on on the camera. Hopefully that's not uh, hitting you too far blinding. Uh, I cut this one off at nine. That one's eight and a half. My thought was I was gonna kind of roll this over, but it looks like on theirs, they just got it close to the edge and then welded. And that's actually what they did. It fits really nice, but here's the funny thing. So if I can get that to stay center, I'll probably have to hold it. So if I measure from the ground up, 20 is dead center. Now I have done nothing. I've just hammered that in there. <laughs> 20 is our dead center. So it is going to be perfect. <laughs> so there's the solution if your uh, frame horn is rotted, which I have never seen a Volkswagen rotted this bad in the frame horn area. Uh, and I've seen my fair share of rust buckets, especially in the Volkswagen department. Um, so I'm going to go back and cut a half inch off of this because it is a little bit, a little bit long in the tooth. And then I think if we can just mirror what's over here and make it kind of fake it till you make it, make it look like it should. The only thing you're going to see that looks different is that little 90 right here. When I 90 that and come out. I think that's the only thing that'll be different. And then on top, our overlap will come out a little bit further because I'm gonna come past this top piece here. I was looking at those uh, frame horn pieces that actually come, the portion that comes off the torsion tube looks very similar in shape. They probably used the same break to make it to the uh, outriggers. If you look at it closely, it's almost identical. Got a little bit different bend, but this part is the same. So 
so I, I don't know. Probably could almost use an outrigger for that if it was long enough. <laughs> but yeah, this is going to hit just about perfect. So go get um, another half inch cut off of this and we'll uh, see what we get. I am not welding this in until I'm certain it's right though because I don't want to have to cut it back out. It was hard enough to get it out the first time. <laughs> Well, everyone, I'm going to stop there. I don't know if you can hear it in my voice or not, but I am declining quickly. I've been out here for a couple hours, and I've just started to feel worse and worse as the time has gone on. So that is where I've stopped what I've come up with. I still need to do some work on it. I've got uh, the piece that's clipped to the bottom still needs a little finesse. It needs to be heated and kind of bent to that shape. Uh, there's a curve on the factory one. Let me see if I can get under here without catching myself. There's a curved piece on the factory. <clears throat> One that uh, com comes up and kind of whoop, comes up and kind of curves. So I'll work on kind of getting my my new one built to where it matches that shape. But I am gonna have to call it a day. So I don't know if I've hit a summer cold or what's going on. Maybe it's my third bout of COVID, but I don't think so. Hopefully I bounce back pretty quick and can be back on it as soon as possible. Next time we'll. Uh, I'll weld that all up. I'm going to clean in here the best I can and kind of get that all cleaned up and treated. I'll have to treat it with the rust treatment and then primer everything before I weld it. Uh, the good thing is <clears throat> I've got that trampoline piece that goes all the way back. So that should be pretty strong. And where I cut it, uh, the one, the frame horn that I cut is directly in the middle of the frame support. So the nice thing is it's kind of like a trailer when you distribute your load directly over your axle, my line of thinking for that was that's going to be the strongest place to do it. If you put it on either side, you're going to have pressure <coughs> from the middle of the bus or from the engine side. So kind of, <coughs> excuse me, kind of worked out well cutting it where I did. I apologize for the voice. So we'll see you next time on Old Pickle the Bus. And hopefully I don't sound <laughs> as much like a frog as I do this time. Wow, that came on quick. Like, I felt fine two hours ago. So we'll see you next time, everybody. Thanks for being here. I truly appreciate it. Uh, and hopefully we can get this thing off the rotisserie pretty soon. Oh, I thought I mentioned we need to talk about what actually happened uh, to this guy that caused the fire. Uh, I finally found it. And when I say finally, <laughs> I went through a lot of stuff before I found it. I found it purely by accident. So I wasn't even looking in the spot that was the problem. So we'll talk about that coming up soon. See you, everybody.